like it. So. So how do you think you made your team better today? Well, I think we filled some things, obviously, with Drieger's uh, injury last year in the World Championships that left us uh, in a little precarious system. We only two goalies in the system. So, um, you know, getting Jones, playing the Stanley Cup final, some experience there, some size. Steve Weir, uh, you know, watch Phil Monum, thinks there's some, some good things there he can work with for sure. Um, you know, we got Joey DeCord, who had a real good season down below last year uh, in the mix. And then we signed Helberg, who's... Uh, you know, big Swedish goaltender uh, in the Olympics, I believe, won the gold medal there. So, um, you know, there's some guys that can fill in. So we think we've, you know, created some competition there, which is great. Um, we're looking at our back end, needed a right shot guy that can add to the power play. Certainly we think Schultz is a guy that can do that. Um, hasn't had much of an opportunity, you know, playing behind Carlson and probably in Pittsburgh behind Latang. So we think uh, that'll be a good opportunity for him. And then up front with, uh, with Barakowski, um, you know, this is a guy that's, you know, he's in the right age group at 27. He's got good speed. He's got good uh, playmaking abilities. He's got a heck of a shot. So, you know, we think getting here and having a little bit more opportunity hopefully helps him uh, reach the potential he wants to get to. So we're excited about that. And, you know, not to mention we shined Shane Wright today too. So that's a, another good addition to our lineup with him and Maddie down the middle. The future looks pretty good in that position for the Krakens. And as far as the rest of the time's concerned. I mean, you guys done for today or are you still active in other areas? <laughs> we're still up there working the phone lines, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> there's some things we're still looking at, whether they come to fruition or not. I don't know, but we're certainly, uh, certainly talking to uh, a lot of people currently still. Anything you want to share or the class <laughs> <laughs> We're having good conversations. <laughs> 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 were, these, were these guys that you had targeted coming in today or were you in on some other deals and, and, and landed on these guys? No, I think you, you look at everything and, you know, we spent a lot of time, you know, we had actually meetings uh, back as early as in early May and trying to lay out who, you know, actually it's even further than that. We have, you put your list together who might get to become a free agent, who might be available, what the fit is for your team. And, and you look at all those things, um, you know, you never know if that player, you know, is going to gonna get there to free agency day, um, you know, what the what the term or the dollar amount is going to be for that player. So um, there's a lot of sort of intangibles that go into it. At the end of the day, you try and make the best decision for your team now, but also in the future, right? With those two young centermen coming, you know, Maddie's contract is going to be up in two years and Shane's right, Shane Wright's contract is probably going to be up in three years. So um, making sure that we don't box ourselves in a corner and having the cap flexibility to pay those guys moving forward is important as well. How much did getting right change kind of your... Your, uh, your attack mode here, or your game plan for the free agency? Well, it, I think it's certainly changed our approach at centerman, right? Um, you know, if you're, if you're out there looking for centerman and you got to give them seven years at a big number, you know, we're looking at Matty Beners and Shane Wright thinking we don't need to do that at this point. So, um, you know, it'd be a growing process for those young guys. I know Matty was at a real good, you know, good 10 games within the last year. This year will be a little different for him, it'll be a little tougher. Teams will know who he is. We're going on the road, it's an 82 game grind. So, um, you know, and Shane's an 18-year-old kid stepping into, uh, you know, hopefully an NHL lineup in September. So it's uh, it's a process, but, you know, certainly you look at those two kids in the last two drafts, and, I mean, I think it's arguably the best one to uh, center punch for young kids in, in the league right now. And so with Shane, I mean, it sounds like you guys are committed to playing him, and if so, I mean, thinking about him and Matt, like, being that young, does anything about that scary you kind of look at it as like, hey, it's the league today, you've got to play these young guys if they're good enough? Yeah, no, I mean, first and foremost, I think, you know, like everybody, they got an opportunity to make our team in camp and they have to earn that spot. So uh, I'm not sitting here saying Shane's going to be in our lineup, but he's certainly going to have an opportunity like everybody else to crack that lineup. If he does, I'm, I'm not worried about the the youth aspect. Um, you know, we've got some real solid veteran guys around those kids and, um, you know, I think they're, they're more than capable of handling themselves. So. Um, you know, I broke at 18. I know it was a long, long time ago. And, you know, kids still break in at 18. So uh, we're just excited if they can do that, that that means that they're pretty good players. Do you guys accomplish the goals that you set out to accomplish today? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, you always have uh, goals and expectations. You're, you're, you know, there's different parts to things, right? You go into the draft and, and there's things you want to do. Maybe there's things you try and do. It doesn't happen. Same thing on free agency day. Um, there's things you're looking to do. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. Um, you know, now you keep in those discussions as to what's still available, who may have to make trades now because of, you know, what their cap situation looks like. 
you know, you look down the road at the, at the RFAs and who might be available there. Um, you look at, you know, down the road into training camp, right? There's guys that, uh, you know, and not everybody can keep everybody in the roster. There's guys going to go through waivers too. So there's a lot of things that still happen between now and the start of camp. But, uh, you know, I think we've made significant process um, without damaging our, our long-term uh, you know, possibilities here moving forward. When did you recall that Burakovsky was right to this team? When did I recall? Uh, <clears throat> well, I mean, you're watching him play, right? He's won a Stanley Cup in Washington. Now he's won a Stanley Cup in, in Colorado. So you got a two-time Stanley Cup guy, which is always good to bring in your locker room. Um, you watched him play in the playoffs. You know, uh, they, they had a lot of talented players in McKinnon, Landis Cog, Nichushkin, you know, Kadri, him. So when we look at our lineup, um, you know, certainly an area we think we need to improve on is the power play, right? And this is a guy that we think can step in. He can come down that sort of the downhill side off the off the wing, and he's got a great shot. He's also got a good vision to make plays. So we think he'll get more of an opportunity with us in that role than he did in Colorado, and hopefully uh, with his talents he can, he can produce, and that's a, that's a big part for us. You identified uh, puck moving right-handed D as a need going into this offseason. Does the Schultz signing fill that need, or is that an area where you might think to add a little bit? We're still still looking and talking. We'll see what things happen, but uh, we certainly, you know, adding Justin is, is good in that regard. I remember watching him in Pittsburgh. You know, he, he got stuck kind of behind Latang, but when he was on the power play, he was good. You know, he, he goes to Washington, didn't get as much power play time because of Carlston in their top unit, but when he got on the power play, he was good. So, you know, we think he has that capability. Um, you know, I remember talking to people in Pittsburgh when he was there, and they were saying he was he was really good in that role. It just kind of the way things fell, he didn't get that opportunity. So uh, we're excited, and uh, you know, he'll have that opportunity. Certainly, he's a solid puck moving D, and, and uh, another addition to hopefully the power play being better. Well, you talked you talk about cap flexibility at that time. Is there a number that you'd like to keep available so that there's whether there are RFAs or whether guys in camp or trades during the season that that allows you to be able to make additions if so? Be yeah, so I mean, you know, a big thing for us is you want to make sure you have that that cap flexibility. Um, you know, it's kind of a complicated process, but with Drieger being hurt, if we have to go into LTI out of the season, and if both Maddie and, and Shane make our lineup and hit their bonuses because they're in LTI, those bonus numbers come off our cap moving forward. So there's a lot of things that factor into how we sort of go about doing that. That's just sort of a simple breakdown of it in one area, but um, you know, having the flexibility. Is, is certainly uh, you know certainly important. Uh, you know when you talk to a lot of people, they wish they had the flexibility. We have it, and we got to make sure that we're managing it properly going forward. And uh, you know we're trying to do both at the same time as, as we manage the cap and make our team better. So when you talk about like the cap flexibility, of course, what we saw with Pacioretty today, basically going for nothing. Like, are deals like that kind of the thing that you keep in mind and say, okay, well that would be nice. It's the cap number that you guys were all thinking about for later, or what, or how does that work? Yeah, I know you, you have discussions with a lot of teams and a lot of players. There's a lot of factors that go into those kind of things. You know, certainly you look at, and I'm not saying in that particular case, but we look at age, we look at term of the contract, we look at the cap hit, we look at the cash value. So a lot of things that factor in. Does that player fit in our roster or not? Um, does that player block us from maybe doing something else, whether it's a free agent or a trade? So there's a lot of things that we discuss as a group and, and uh, you know, and before we sort of make those uh, final conclusions. They run pretty busy seven days. Uh, I know you probably run the phones a lot, but our staff, what's everybody's opinion in depth camp this week? Well, um, I, I'm disappointed I didn't get to watch it today. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit busy, but uh, from from the response that I could hear from the crowd, it seemed like it was exciting. I will tell you this: I, you know, I came watch day one out here when Hack and the guys are running practice, and and. Um, I left there feeling pretty good. I mean, there's some there's some good hockey players now in our in our depth chart in our organization, and that was exciting to see. So um, that only bodes well moving forward for us. Missed that long game by Shane Wright again in that final game there. I, 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 I didn't see any of it. Like I said, I had my shades down. I was working the phone line. So <laughs> hopefully I can watch it on tape. Curious about uh, Martin Jones and just recently bringing on Steve Breer. What connection do you see maybe with working with him to maximize his value? Well, you know, we, we hired Steve. He's a guy with a lot of experience, um, had success. So, um, you know, we think bringing him in uh, adds to our, our uh, you know, ability to make our goaltenders better. Um, I know he's already had, you know, Groobies back in town and working out. I know they've already had dinner and started building that relationship. 
you know, certainly we had Steve, you know, look at different videos on goaltenders and give us opinion and stuff. And, you know, he had a lot of time for Martin and, and the way he played. And, um, you know, there's probably a few things maybe he wants to work on or tweak, but, um, you know, he's excited about the possibility of working with him as well. So, um, you know, we'll see how things go here moving forward. But it's good to have a goalie coach that's excited to work with the players. And talking with the goalie coaches, they're excited to work with Steve. So, so far, so good. <laughs> Yeah, I, we're interested in everybody coming in. It's a good player. It's just, uh, you know, sometimes players, you know, want to play in certain markets or, you know, closer to home or different things. So uh, there's a lot of factors that kind of go into those final decisions. When you look at Shane Wright and, the, the, you know, what he can do this year, what, is there something that's impressed you the most about his game here so far? And this kid's been a microscope for, for a lot of years. And, and uh, you know, I had a chat with him the other day and just said, all I want from him is just to, to play hockey and have some fun. I mean, you know, the pressure's gone of whether he's the number one or not. And the fact, the fact that he went to four is irrelevant. Um, you know, we were really excited he went to four. Um, not to get off topic, but that happened in my draft here too. I mean, teams made trades because they didn't want me, and I'm sitting there at four, right? So um, things happen. It, it, that's all... You know, not neither here nor there. For me, it's just getting the kid to go out there and have some fun and enjoy playing a game of hockey because he's ultra talented. He can do a lot of really good things, and and that's what we're trying to do: just make him comfortable and and let him do what he does best. And if we do that, I think we got a heck of a hockey player. So you're saying Shane writes the next round pick? No, <laughs> <laughs> he, he skates way faster than me. <laughs> one thing you talked about is opportunity. You said that word a lot. Like, I mean, how much of a conversation piece has that been? Not only with the free agents today, but even with a guy like Shane or, or even Maddie. Granted, like Maddie got a chance to see it the last ten games, but I mean, how much have you been using that word? With him? No, I mean, I, I think when you look at, at, at what we what our roster looks like, I and mean, we traded six guys out at the deadline, that opened up some spots, and uh, certainly in a discussion with a guy like Barakowski. You know, he's maybe seventh guy getting on the Colorado power play instead of in the top five. So, get that, so he comes here, he gets that opportunity to be on the first power play. He gets that opportunity to be consistently, you know, possibly in the top three or top six for sure. So um, you get that opportunity to be in positions to shoot the puck and, and be successful. So, um, yeah, certainly if you have that opportunity, you know, it's, it's a shame on us if we don't try and sell that to people to, to get them interested. And real so. quick, with Ryan Donato, um, that was a name that people didn't know what was going to happen. What was sort of the thought there about the decision with him yeah so the, the way it works with with players um, you, you, know, you can be an rfa or ufa an rfa being restricted ufa being unrestricted if you're an rfa you can't have arb rights or not in ryan's case he did arbitration rights so you know part of our stuff is to look at what that arbitration case looks like and you know he had a hell of a season last year um be honest we, we just didn't want to go to arbitration with him so that's why we didn't qualify him. um certainly like the player and uh you know, we'll continue to have discussions there. I don't know where it goes, but, uh, you know, that was the reason behind us making that decision. But there's still a possibility he could come back at some point. Yeah, there's well, a, unless he signed with somebody else that I didn't see today. But, yeah, there's always always a possibility. Yeah. So. Good. All right. Thank you all. Okay. It.